Hey there, Bear Club! At the Mama Bear Initiative, we explore how to protect ourselves so we can protect our cubs, the people who depend on us. Join us and get the confidence you need to stay safe, make good choices, and protect yourself and those you care about. Let's go! Hello, and welcome back to the Mama Bear Initiative podcast. I'm Stephanie Dunham. I'm Evelyn Mason. I'm Rochelle Knapp. We'd like to thank you for joining us on this podcast episode. And uh, we're going to be talking about some pretty serious stuff. Yeah. Next three episodes, we decided to make a three-parter on abuse. We were recently um, discussing an article that I came across on Facebook that was talking about clergy abuse in the church Mm -hmm. and how churches should respond to it and relating some of my own personal experiences when I reposted it. And we were just talking about it together as a group, and we decided, why not talk about what abuse is? Because it seems like there's a lot of misconceptions and misinformation about what's considered abuse. Mm -hmm. And we feel compelled to educate people. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, agreed. So we decided to break this up into three different parts. Mm -hmm. This part we're going to do is called What is Abuse? So we're going to define abuse and talk about common misperceptions of what is considered abuse. Right. Right. Then the next part we're going to talk about how do you know when you're being abused because sometimes we just don't know. That's true. Like we're not educated. Yeah. 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 And then finally, the part that I think is the hardest part for most people is once they become aware is actually doing something about it. So we're going to talk about what to do. Right. Right. If you're being abused. Yeah. So we're going to get a little bit personal, I think, with some of this. We're going to share some of our Mm -hmm. own stories. We're going to, you know, try to make this as relatable as possible because it's not just a clinical thing. It's also personal for me. Very personal. Oh, definitely. And for all three of us. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's start by... Defining various forms of abuse. What kinds of abuse are there? And I think there's more than just what we have on our list. Right? Yeah. So I think the most obvious is the physical abuse, right? So somebody strikes somebody, you see the bruises, you see the evidence. And, you know, those are oftentimes are the ones that end up getting um, reported. It's the, the obvious, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sexual abuse is probably the next most prominent um, which is the most, I think, the most tragic because it happens to people who are innocent children and people who can't protect themselves. Mm-hmm. who are very vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about physical abuse, though, before we move on to that one. I think I want to talk about what physical abuse and the other, the other types look like right? Yes. as yeah. we go along so people can, like, hear this and go, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's happening to me. Right. Yeah. Because we want you to think about what you're enduring and right. I correctly identify it. Yeah. So let's talk about physical abuse. What does that look like? Well, it's the most obvious would be hitting someone or subduing them in some physical way that's unjustified and mm-hmm. excessive, I would say. Yeah. And usually there's like a there's usually a lot of rage, a lot of anger a lot of control. Um, I was thinking in particular about like um, a child, you know, on the, on the receiving end of a very angry parent's rage, essentially, you know, where maybe the child has done something that was upsetting to the person, but they just completely lose control. Right. So least, what does losing you know. control look like? You mentioned hitting. What are, what are other ways that physical... Uh, abuse manifests other kinds of physical abuse like people burning people with mm-hmm. cigarettes or pulling kicking um like yanking i've seen it where like somebody will grab like grab the child by the wrist and pull them really hard mm-hmm. um pinching i've seen that in yeah. public um slapping mm-hmm. even um trying to think of how to describe it. It was like a, a very sort of aggressive holding 
of the person. Mm-hmm. Like a bear like hug. Really or... sque- yeah, like not just, um, you know, encouraging the child, for example, I guess that keeps coming to my mind as a child, but, um, you know, helping, you know, them to control themselves. It's more forcing them. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's more of a controlling. Yeah, so hitting, slapping, pinching, pulling, yanking, uh, scratching, uh, yeah. kicking, knocking down, Even, any any yeah. number of things. Like the one that we hear about the most when it comes to adult on adult abuse is men hitting their wives mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or girlfriends right? Or, yeah. or significant, whatever, hitting them out of rage. Yeah. Or even using an object as well. Right. And these, like you mentioned, are typically done as a way to put fear in someone, to manipulate them. Generally, abuse is done to manipulate or coerce somebody right, right into something, yeah. whether it's behaving I'm using air quotes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Behaving if it's a child yeah. or, mm-hmm. you know, if it's an adult woman being beaten by their spouse, then the the spouse is trying to control them in some way. Right. Or even just venting their anger. Like, how dare you treat me like this? I'm going to punish you. Yeah. Right. Basically. Punishment. Um, undeserved, for sure. I don't think anybody deserves physical punishment, personally, at all, for right. any reason. Right. Agreed. Um, but, you know, it, it, it comes down to really the bigger, stronger person attacking the smaller, weaker person to control them in some way physically. Right. Yeah, That's what a, it comes down to. It's a lashing out. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to sexual abuse. What does that look like? And this, if you're triggered by this, maybe just move on. Yeah. Listen to it later. You know, this is tough stuff to listen to. So just be be aware. We're going to get a little bit, you know, a little yeah. bit into it. Yeah. I think inappropriate touching. Um, meant to, because I mean, if you touch somebody on the shoulder. Oh, right. So, so it's, it's meant to stimulate, right? Right, right. Um, yeah. Even, <laughs> even verbally, if you talk to somebody in a sexual way and it's unwanted and you're Forcing yourself upon them if you don't touch them, it's still abuse, in my opinion. Yes, you, it would be that mm-hmm. would be considered harassment. Yeah, mm-hmm. if you're saying sexual things to someone and you don't have a relationship with them, yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's definitely abuse. It would be out of line, completely inappropriate. Yeah, so unwanted touch that's yeah. done in a sexual manner. Or even in a way that's that's sort of yeah, it's definitely a sexual manner. It also like to control. So I think about like a, a, a boss, for example, touching a, one of his subordinates inappropriately. Right. Um, yeah. Even a hand on the knee and then moving up, you know, or other areas where they could touch and their hand lingers. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. All the way to, you know, assault. Right. Yeah. Like forcing your forcing someone to participate in a sexual act with you against their will. Yes. And to avoid, to hopefully clear up some confusion, because this has been something I've talked to someone at work about recently. If you don't want someone to touch you, and you even if you don't verbally say that to them, but you indicate you don't want that, and they still do, that's still considered abuse. Yes. That's still considered unwanted. Mm-hmm. It's the same as if you were raped. If you don't want someone to, even if you're in a relationship with them, it doesn't matter. If you say no, and you don't want them to, and they still do it anyways... That's still abuse. That would period. be considered abusive, definitely. Yeah. Because they're, again, they're not respecting you. They're not respecting your boundaries. Not even respecting healthy boundaries, period. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. It's, it's just, just trying to, like, almost like they feel entitled or something. Right. Like, right. I can touch you where I want to. Because we're in a relationship. Or, That's what they think. Yeah, or even not. Okay, so we've talked about sexual abuse quite a bit. Let's go ahead and move on to verbal abuse. What is verbal abuse? So verbal abuse is abuse when somebody is saying something aggressive to you to control you. Really, any abuse is about fear, manipulation, control, Control. coercion, in the form of pain and suffering. And there goes the machine. 
This you know, we a- are recording this in my dining room. <laughs> Actual people live here. And we have things running and, and humming happening. and whatever. People walking on, you know, on the having floor a brief above light moment and, of yeah. hilarity here. <laughs> anyway, back into this topic. My point is that you can. I mean, if I'm just like Rochelle, you're such an idiot, right? If I say that, it's not necessarily abuse. I'm just being mean, right? Yeah. But if I said something like Rochelle, if you ever do that again, I will blank, blank, blank to you. That would make you stop doing this thing. That's abusive. Yeah. Right. And that's not the same thing as setting a boundary. Because if you apply consequences to someone, usually they're just. Right. But when it's done in a way that just punishes for no good reason, there's no justice in it, then it's mm-hmm. just abuse. Yeah. Right. When it's actually harming the other person mm-hmm. and your motives. Yeah, I think motives matter for sure. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I talking to her this way? Yeah, I mean, in order for it to be justified uh, consequences, there has to have been wrongdoing, like literal wrongdoing on your part. Right. Right. You had to have crossed some boundary. Right. And that does require action, but it's more respectful. It's more self-protective. It's not about vindictive. It's not about controlling. Mm -hmm. It's not about being mean. It's about being healthy, really. Right, Which is yeah. sort of the opposite of you know, the whole thing with abuse. You're being kind, but you're still maintaining what you need. It's right. not it's not abusive at all to maintain a boundary. Keep it. Right. Create and maintain a boundary. Right. Right. Um, so then we have emotional abuse. Now, emotional abuse usually comes through verbal right. abuse. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're saying something to someone, but you're manipulating their emotions. Mm-hmm. Yes. In some way, you know, it's it's hard to emotionally manipulate or em- emotionally abuse somebody silently. Yeah, right. And since we don't have um, mind reading, <laughs> <laughs> true, <laughs> or whatever we whatever we call it, that when yeah. we're talking to somebody in their mind, since yes. we don't have that like as a thing, telepathy. Yes, telepathy. Yeah. There we go. I was going to say ESP, but that's back from the 70s. Right. Everything was ESP. Yes. Yes. I remember that. <laughs> now it's ESPN. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're sorry. Doing... ADHD moment, guys. Yes, we're having a little. My apologies. A little, a little... All right. It's getting too heavy in here. <laughs> right. So since we can't read other people's minds. And we can't talk and, to and them in their mind. We can't talk to them in their mind, right? Provoking emotions, like provoking someone to anger or something or to to like heavy duty sadness or grief Mm -hmm. or whatever to manipulate them right but you have to do that verbally yeah and it's like pushing their buttons you know what will make her upset you know what will make her cry you know what will you know get her angry Mm -hmm. and doing that thing and um it's basically being deliberate about it yeah and it's asserting control it's asserting power right definitely inappropriate well this, this whole thing is about inappropriate, right? All of it. Uh, all abuse is inappropriate all at all it. times. It's never forever. okay. Usually Just deliberate. Put too. that out there. It's never okay, period. Yeah. So um, the next on our list is psychological. Again, it has to be verbal. Right. right. But things like gaslighting, where you're making someone like question their perception of reality, mm-hmm. that would be more psychological abuse. Yeah. You know, where you're making, when you're making the other person question their own sanity in some way, right? then you're psychologically abusing that person. And these things don't happen in a vacuum. They're all happening at one time, generally, mentally, emotionally, verbally. They're all happening together. I meant, yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. A lot of times there's a mixture. It's not necessarily just one one or the other. It's usually a combination. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then we have financial abuse, which is withholding resources and funds from one person, like punishing someone by with not giving them money when they need it. Right. right. When it's your it's your job to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's yeah. all an extension of the same idea, which is control. Right. Yes. And being deliberate about harming this other person and controlling them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, fu- the last one we have on our list, and there's probably more, is neglect. And 
you know, I think neglect is probably more of a parent child dynamic mm -hmm. than a part like adult adult dynamic, although it could be a child to an elderly parent. Right. If you're not taking care of their needs, like, I don't know, the one that comes to mind is your child's diaper is soiled and you haven't touched it in three days. That's Oof. considered neglect. Yeah. Or you're not feeding them when they're hungry. Yeah, not providing them a good environment to live in. Right. Um, if they grew up, <laughs> something I've watched too much of, I think, is hoarders. Oh, And yes. the children who grew up in that environment, that's abusive. That's neglect. Yes. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. It is. So, we've got a little bit more time. So, why don't we, um, why don't we talk about some personal experiences with this mm. that you want to share? Um, you know, I know we all have stories of times where we've experienced some or all of these. When I was growing up and I was living in a foster home for about three months, I was talking to a psychologist I was seeing ordered by the court on a regular basis. And she, in one of the sessions, she brought up abuse or uh, neglect. And it's something I had never even, I was 14 years old, what did I know? But mm -hmm never even considered because I was given food and I was given shelter and given clothing, everything, the basic necessities were being met, but it was done in a way that was still controlling. It was done in a way that was still threatening to my life. And you were being punished. Yeah, I was being mm -hmm. punished. The food was erratic at the time. Sometimes I'd be allowed to eat. Sometimes I wasn't allowed to eat. Wow. Uh, things like that just didn't make any sense to me at all. I wouldn't be allowed to shower for days at a time. Mm. Stuff like that happened a lot. And she mentioned that was neglect. And yes. I never thought of it that way because I have always, I had up to that point to find neglect as not paying attention, but it was intentional. Yeah. It was still yeah. a neglect, but it was done in a manipulative, vindictive sort of way. Right. Yeah. And so that was the least clear idea of abuse to me at the time that not getting what you need and whether it's done because they don't care or because they're actually manipulating you is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that you're being mm -hmm. neglected and you're a child. That's the problem. Right. Right. Because, because all abuse is self-serving to the abuser. Yeah. Right. They're getting something out of it that feeds something, the desire to control their ego, um, the desire to punish I mean, why they're doing it, that they have to talk to their own therapist about it. Right. But the fact that they're doing it at all means that there's something in them that needs to have control. Right. Over another person. And in this case, it was you. Mm hmm from, yeah. our, from our mother. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have myriads of stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of, um things that went on but i'm gonna think about that for a while evelyn i don't know if you have something you want to share yeah i have um a, a myriad of stories as well um i think for me the most insidious form of abuse i ever received was um from my ex-husband because it was over a period of years and it was never, he was never physically abusive to me. For at least 20 some years of our marriage, he barely even raised his voice to me. Mm. But when I started to realize that I was basically being controlled by him and I started to speak up and tell him when I didn't like something or didn't want something, mm -hmm. That's when I really started to see his true nature because then he would get very angry. He would, that's when he started to get loud. Um, that's when he started to rage at me. Hmm. What I didn't realize was that abuse had been going on for years. I just hmm. finally saw it. So what did that look like? We get ready to make a decision and let's say we were going to buy a, a car. Uh, my ex-husband would have found a car. Usually it was a, a basically a junker. And he would start to tell me about how good this vehicle was and what we could do with it. And, and then he would tell me, but why don't you pray about it? And then 
I would be like, well, let me pray about it. But in my mind, I would think, well, what does he want me to do? What does my husband want me to do? And then I would do that. Um, and that way I got his approval. I got his, um, yeah, basically approval like good girl, you know, and everything seemed fine in our marriage as long as I was going along with what he wanted. Um, and this went on for years. And I thought that that's what a good wife was. She obeyed her husband. She did what he wanted. It was when I started to not do what he wanted that I started to realize what our marriage really had been all those years and how one-sided it was. And as long as he was getting his way, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And when I started to think for myself, when I started to, I, I thought in a healthy way, say, actually, no, I don't want this. Um, that's when I got to see his true nature. So these the this example of these cars that you bought, why were these cars such a problem? Like you'd give into it and he he would go and purchase X car, but then w what would happen after that? Well, um usually he would do some work on it and it would seem to work okay, but then the vehicle would start to malfunction essentially. So here I am with, you know, two, three, four small children and now I'm stuck on the side of the road. How frequently would that happen? Well, um, a lot. It happened a lot. It happened basically with every vehicle we purchased because it was like he just he refused to get a newer model, a good car, a safe car for us. Mm -hmm. And we justify it, fight it by saying, well, he justified and I went along with it by saying, well, you know, it, it won't cost us much. Mm hmm. But I can, I can relate many times of being stranded with that vehicle. Well, since I met you, it seemed like every week or every other day you were stranded. Mm -hmm. It was so frequent. Like you would be calling me saying, well, I'm stuck on the side of the road again. It seemed like it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think because it had happened from the start of our marriage all the way up until I finally insisted on getting a, a car that was less than 10 years old and in good condition. That was at the very end of our marriage. So it was just, it was weird. I had this disconnect. Mm -hmm. Like it kept happening, but I just accepted that as, well, that's just what happens. Instead of going, why is he subjecting us to this? And maybe too, why am I going along with it? Yeah. So it sounds like you're being psychologically manipulated. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe verbally manipulated. Yes, there was definitely the verbal component. And he was very good at selling me on things. And I just my MO was go along to get along because that's pretty much what I grew up with as well. And you know, it's hard in these in the kind of situation you're describing, Evelyn, where, you know, it it appears fine. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. from the outside perspective, well, she's just doing what her husband wants. It appears fine, but it's really not fine. Right. Right. It's not okay to be the only voice in a partnership. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. other voice is being manipulated into always saying yes yep. to yeah. something. And that sounds like what you're describing to me. And because I didn't know what abuse was, I didn't know what he was doing i didn't you know i didn't realize it was wrong right and um you know now i'm kind of you know it's very upsetting when i think about it how many years living under that yeah know? and the person who's not as aware would not think that was abuse because it's not you were going along to get along like you said there was no arguing he was he was manipulating manipulating you but that's still considered abuse because you weren't allowed to be vocal about anything you didn't have a voice he didn't make a decision he did all of that and then yeah. he would say well why don't you pray about it which also still sounds like manipulation right because you were thinking to yourself well, what if was my husband want and it's subtle but it's still abuse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you're not allowed to speak up and you don't feel at liberty to give your opinion and you're being forced into something and manipulated you're still being abused right and what's telling is as long as you're going along to get along once you start saying no to something 
and the other person starts responding with aggressiveness and anger, mm -hmm. that's that's why you're saying yes. Right. Because you know the consequences of saying no. That's where the manipulation comes in. Yep. Right. So um, we need to move on to the second part because we're at 26 minutes. Okay. Um, what is what are common misperceptions of what is considered abuse? Well, like I just mentioned, the whole car thing with your ex-husband, Evelyn, that's abuse. It doesn't seem like it on the surface because it's just words and back and forth about a car, but it's happening multiple times. And there's some fear about the consequences of you saying no mm -hmm. or objecting to it. That's yeah. still, that would be something someone else might not consider abuse, but it is because it's happening. It happened repeatedly. Right. I think maybe along with that, sort of like it's just a one off, but when it's not, you know, I'm sure there are other areas where you're being manipulated in the same way. Oh, it was across the board. You know, once you start to see it, it's like it's like it's just everything just crumbles down. You're like, oh, there's the reality. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, I think I, I think when a person hears the word abuse, they automatically think, it's going to be obvious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like the woman with the black eye, you know, right? Or the you know that are the you know fingerprints on her arms from being grabbed, or somebody screaming at somebody. When you like, when I think about a parent screaming at their child, that feels abusive. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a you know one of the misperceptions is that it's obvious. Over, ob yeah, yeah, overt and obvious. Yeah, and it's. Oftentimes, because um, the most prominently and most well-known are physical and sexual abuse, yes. those are the ones people are looking for when you say abuse. People don't want to use the word abuse if it's for anything else, if it's something right. that would be considered, quote, minor. Right. And I remember, Rochelle, you saying to me that you were being mildly abused. And I said, <laughs> there's no right. such thing as mild abuse. It's abuse, abuse or it's is, not. Right. And There's no in between. And let's just call it what it is. I, I think there's a fear of... Like, you don't want to be extreme and start calling everything abuse. Right. But there's the other side of you're not calling out something that is abuse. Abuse. What are you right. afraid of? You know, mm -hmm. call it what it is. So, so it all really comes back to what is the, what is the basis for the behavior right. that mm -hmm. you're receiving? Like, what is it the other, why is the other person doing that to you? Right. If they're trying to control you or manipulate you or curse you or do something to get you to do what they want, mm -hmm. then it's abuse. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how they're doing it. Right. right. It doesn't matter if they're talking to you a certain way, screaming at you, throwing things at you, making you question reality, you know, taking things from you. It doesn't matter. Right. What matters is, is why they're doing it. Yeah. Not what they're doing. And that's how um, we define abuse. Like, what what is the point and the purpose? Now, I know there's like a few good online examples of of lists of what abuse is, and well, I'll actually put the the links to both of the articles that I've come across mm -hmm. that we've worked with, so people can read for themselves. Yeah. If you want to know, and I was extremely surprised mm -hmm. a few years ago when I was researching this how much behavior is considered abuse hmm. according to one list that yeah. i found it was like 60 some examples wow and i kept reading the list and i'm like oh my gosh that and that was because i had just been treated abusively hmm. by someone yeah and i was trying to figure out was their behavior abusive was it you know what what just happened right because it was so like extreme and excessive and meant to control me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was like, tr I was flabbergasted because of right. my history w of being abused. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not always certain when I am being abused. Yeah. And in this case, it wasn't physical. It wasn't sexual. It was but verbal. you knew, you knew. I knew that the were... person's point was to put fear in me and to manipulate me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and I didn't, but it, I wasn't sure. <laughs> right. Right. I, I guess, you know, until you know... You don't know, but there is that part of you that goes, okay, let me dig Something's a little not further. not right, but I have no idea what. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I'm really glad. I remember when that happened, and I remember the article you shared with us. It was like 65 things. Mm -hmm. I remember just being amazed at the, the number and then going into it. 
and realizing, oh, wow. So when I felt bad when this certain thing happened, Mm -hmm. that's why. And it was very, um, I guess it was empowering even just reading that because then I can go back and say, well, what he did to me was wrong. What she did to me was abusive. Right. And to be honest, some of it can also, you know, do this uh, searchlight into our own hearts and go, yeah, I've been doing that as well. Yes. And that's an important point to make, Evelyn. I think sometimes we are behaving abusively towards other people and we're justifying it in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They hurt me, so I'm going to hurt them back. Or I could never abuse someone. Oh, but you are. But you are. <laughs> right. And I think that's so important as we discuss this sort of thing, not to just keep it outward and say, yeah, that person abused me. That person, yes, they did. But let's look at ourselves as well. And that's mm-hmm. that's the hard work. But it's so important. Yeah. Because yeah, unfortunately, broken people hurt other broken, want to break other people. And so it gets passed down, whether through mother to child or husband to wife or whatever it it can get carried on the behavior can continue in someone else and so checking ourselves and making sure we're not doing the same thing is so important because we don't want to become abusers as well yeah right it's easy to miss our own behavior and not realize that what we're doing is wrong yeah and to be abusive ourselves you know, because I think the two responses that I've ever seen to growing up in an abusive household is to become the abuser or to become the opposite right. of the abuser. Like, I will never treat my children that way. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I know I, for myself, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but for myself, when I had children, I felt the second way. I do not want to pass this on now. I have my own pathologies and things that I've been working through. And, you know, my anxieties and things are affecting my my child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there have been times when I've screamed at him to control him. When he was younger, we went through a period where he was just out of control and I was upset and I was just screaming and screaming and screaming at him to try to get him to stop. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it just occurred to me, this isn't working. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm hurting him. I'm not helping him. Right. And uh, I think I, I, at that point, reformed myself. God probably had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Reformed my behavior and decided no longer am I going to do this. And, you know, if I did lose control, at times I have, I would have to go to him and apologize. But I say for the most part, I'm doing relatively well with not losing control that way Mm -hmm. towards my child Mm because he didn't deserve that. And recently he told me he was being screamed at at his new job and I had to like sit him down and educate him on the fact that that's abusive behavior. Right. Yeah. And I said, if you learned at any point in your childhood where I was screaming at you or your father was screaming at you that that was okay, we were wrong. We had to apologize. Yeah. Yeah. It was not okay for us to treat you that way. You didn't deserve that, you know? Yeah. So as, as virtuous as I try to be in this world, it's true that I have at times been the abuser. Right. Yeah. And, you know, thankfully God is convicting me on that or has been convicting me on that throughout my, my, my life to the point where now I'm, you know, I've been relatively calm for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> right. For at least a decade, I've been pretty calm mm-hmm. with, with my son. And other people. Because my propensity is to go to anger first. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been, you know, able to control myself. But I've, it's because a lot of therapy, a lot of introspection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, it's not like I just woke up one day and I was like, oh, well, I'm better now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to, I had to actually work through why I was losing my temper. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and then when I learned about You know, that a few years ago, it's been like five or five or so years since we read that list, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it became even more determined not to be that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, so we're at um, 35 minutes. Oh, wow. That flew (laughs) really fast. (laughs) 
I know once you get into a topic of discussion, especially something that's so personal, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's easy to lose track of time. But um, you know, we we want to educate. Yes, we want to yeah. facilitate change mm-hmm. coming from both ends, both as the abused and as an abuser. Yes. Yes. You know, and to to bring awareness to people. And especially people who are in a situation where they're just not, they feel like something's not right, but they're just not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they need just a little more information to make a decision to leave. Yes. So, yeah. Or report it. Encourage you, don't shrug it off. Don't talk yourself out of it. Mm -hmm. Get curious. Figure out, why do I feel this way? What's going on here? And sometimes zoom out a little and say, if I saw this happening to someone else, what would I tell them? Right. You know, so what do we always say, better to be right, better be sit. No, that doesn't actually apply in this situation. No. no. Okay, never mind. Let's cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's more of self-defense. That's more gotcha. of like making assumptions. This isn't about making assumptions. This is about defining. Gotcha. Concretely, what abuse is and taking action based on that. It's a different dynamic. Yeah. So it's really what's really going on here and what should I do about it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you for joining us. If you've listened to this and you know someone you're concerned about, send this to them. Yes, please Please. share. Share it, share it, and share it some more because the only way people are going to learn is if we spread the word. Yes. Right. Our goal is to educate people and help them understand what they're dealing with. And the only way we can do that is if you guys share this with everybody that might be able to use it yep so i'd like to thank you for joining us on this podcast episode i'm stephanie dunham i'm evelyn mason i'm rochelle knapp have a great day bye everybody see ya we hope you enjoyed today's episode thanks so much for joining us as we discussed such an important topic we hope you got some food for thought and encouragement to keep going and keep growing See you later, Bear Club. Remember to join the Bear Club on our Patreon page for exclusive content. The link is in the description. You can find our podcast on Google, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts.